From skeletons to illness and disease and irrational jealousy. Hello, Magic here and welcome back to another episode of Interesting Toe Facts. The series where I'll talk about facts from Toho that I find either fun, unusual, or simply interesting. So without further ado, let's begin the Interesting Toe Facts number 37. Number 5. I'm sure we can all agree that getting sick sucks a lot. I can attest to that, given that I made a video about it. What happens when there's a yokai that can manipulate illness and disease? You'll probably want to stay away from there. Yamame is that yokai. Her ability is manipulation of illness and disease, with a specialization in infectious ones. Shit. Here comes the zombies. The amount of viruses and germs being quite strong that they affect the atmosphere and are highly lethal. Again. Stay away! It can be said to be a natural enemy to humans who are based upon living in groups. However, with the sensibility of not unreasonably inflicting illness, she herself doesn't have that sort of intention of using it often at all. This is probably due to being tormented with the experience of having inflicted disease on attacking humans in the far past. Alright guys, just don't be assholes and you'll get out of there alive. Hopefully, anyway. It was partially implied in Symposium that the main disease she manipulates is influenza, as the only identifiable common symptom is a high fever, and the symptoms themselves change from year to year. It is further implied by the footnote which says that the sickness is called different things each year, and each given types, such as type A or type B. As a side note, Aaron is apparently attempting to create a miracle drug to cure this specific disease. Why am I not surprised that Aaron is trying to tackle it? If anyone can make the cure, it's gotta be Aaron. Number 4 I want to talk about our mind reader Satori for a bit. Satori Komeiji is, as her namesake suggests, a Satori, which means she has the power to read minds. Yeah, the whole being named by your species never really got to me. Out of all the names that could have been picked, you got Satori. That'd be like if my parents called me human. Man, that would have been bloody awkward at school. Anyway, the Satoris are particularly detested, even among the other yokais currently living in former hell. Her palace never gets visitors because no one wants to visit her. Even Kanako felt the need to go behind her back to get control of the hell of blazing fires, as it would be impossible to negotiate with her. I can imagine negotiating with a mind reader with your real intents can be tricky at times. Number 3 you know when you're just chilling with your crew, minding your own business, when you stumble across a fucking skeleton? I know, I know I'm eating it. But yeah, let's talk about it. In Symposium and under Kisume's article, children were playing around a dried up well when they encountered some skeletal remains of a human. Damn, that's one hell of a surprise from just playing around. The well ended up being off limits. I mean, when you're finding skeletal remains on the surface like that, I can't exactly blame them for doing that. The tricky part to this was that no one in the village was missing, so we don't know who the bones belong to. Sakurako san, get your ass here now! Regardless of bone fetishes, the bones near the well disappeared while no one was looking during preparations to bury it in Menzuka. This rolled onto a case whether there was any sort of incident or not, along with the identity of the previous owner of the bones. Yukari thought it was by the yokai from the underworld and that they wanted to scare the humans since their powers came from the negative energy of humans, but it may have been a simple misunderstanding. There was a non-intervention agreement pact made between the underworld yokai and the surface so the situation could become complicated. Tengu hoped to avoid trouble with the underworld. The incident was settled as silver birch branches having been mistaken for bones, to which no ominous occurrences had happened at the human village. At a later date, it was confirmed that the dried up well was filled up with dirt. Who did this is unknown. That did not help much as more questions are raised than were answered, but that's the nature of the series itself, so I can't complain too much. Number 2 Know when you're drinking alcohol and you want it to taste better? Well, I got a solution for ya. Now a powerful Oni that is Yugi, make it taste what you want. She carries a sake dish called the Hoshiguma dish. It raises the quality of any sake poured into it. It sounds like it only works with sake, so I can't use it for my vodka. That sucks. Keizin later uses it to transform some of her own sake for a party at the Hakari Shrine. The dish itself is considered a masterwork of the Oni. 
I mean, if you guys drank sake, you can always ask Yugi to make yours a little better. Number one. The moment I mentioned the word jealousy here, you guys pretty much know who I'm going to be talking about. So let's talk about how Parsi's jealousy can be retarded. Anyway, Parsi harbors intense feeling of jealousy due to being despised. No matter the situation the other person may be, she'll always be jealous of it, even if the other person is actually less fortunate. She will be jealous of the fact that they're not jealous. Since you just heard that, let me give you some examples. Let's say I'm walking and I saw someone stepping on a $10 bill. The person notices it and picks it up and puts it in the wallet. Now I'm jealous because that could have been my 10 bucks. I say that's an understandable jealousy. And remember, even if the person is less fortunate, she will still be jealous. Let's play this scenario out. Imagine I'm going to 7-Eleven because I want a Slurpee. Now when I come out, I meet a certain rabbit yokai holding a gun at me. Let's call her... Douchebag. Now Douchebag, living up to her name, shoots me. Oh! Fuck! And I fall on the ground, bleeding and crying like a little bitch. Now another rabbit yokai comes around and sees this. Let's call her... Mini Douche. Mini Douche steals my wallet and runs away. Now here's where Parsi comes in. Damn you. I'm so jealous right now. Why the bloody hell are you jealous? I'm jealous of the fact that you're not jealous. Girl, I just got shot, wallet stolen, and I'm lying on the cement ground here bleeding, not knowing if I'm going to fucking live, and your issue is that you're bloody jealous of the fact that I'm not jealous. I'm jealous of the fact that you're feeling such emotional distress. Oh, fuck. Now that that skit's done, let's continue on. In this way, her jealousy is quite irrational. I think we just established that fact. This isn't to say Parsi is actually unfortunate. If you were to talk to her directly, she would come off as completely normal, even if a bit cheerful. But this masks the jealousy that she's actually feeling, and afterwards she will end up despising you and talking behind your back. Man, this girl is wacky as shit! I can't think of anyone else who'd be jealous of getting shot, that's for sure. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Which facts were your favorite? Do you think Aaron will make a cure for Yamame's disease? Who do you think those skeletal remains belong to? Or do you feel Parsi's jealousy is pretty stupid after that example? If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. Or I might actually get shot by douchebag with Parsi watching with envy. Oh boy. This is Magi and thanks again for watching.